This segment is going to be about why we get fat. A fat person is someone who has tried and failed a whole bunch of weight loss programs in their lives before. In fact, most fat people are experts at failing weight loss programs. Well, the next segment will talk about why they fail, but if, if you don't know why you became fat in the first place, you don't know how to fix it. All human beings eat for two reasons. We eat for the nutritional value of the food, and we eat for the emotional value of the food. When you're eating for the nutritional value of your food, your body is very, very good at regulating what you need and how much you consume. And your body has switch on and switch off functions to regulate how much of that food that has nutritional value you eat. When you get hungry, you eat a certain amount of food, and if there's no ulterior motive to eat it, when the hunger's gone, you're full. However, the body does not regulate the times that you eat for the emotional value. When you're having fun with food, more is always better, and the body doesn't regulate that. You have to have very tight boundaries around how much you eat when you're having fun, and what you eat when you're having fun. So, foods that do not get you high, foods that don't release chemicals in your brain will never ever make you fat. In fact, I'll tell you this, it is impossible to get fat from eating food. Because foods such as steak and broccoli and lettuce and tomatoes and chickens and eggs and shrimp and cheese, those foods have nutritional value, but they really have no endorphin releasing capacity. Therefore, you eat them till you're full and you're done. It's a little bit like drinking water. You'll drink water until you're full and then even if there's more water in front of you, you're not going to drink anymore. But when it comes to beer, you'll drink two or three beers to slake your thirst, but it's giving you a buzz. And you'll, you'll drink more and more beer, as long as it's available, not because it's fulfilling your thirst, that's already gone, but it's because it feels good. Most of us have tight boundaries around our drinking alcohol and our consumption of a certain drug that we eat for its emotional value. But some of us find so much pleasure in a certain substance that we eat and drink, and we start to eat and drink it, not just for the fun of it, but to help us with our stress, with our boredom, with our relaxation, to satisfy all of our emotional needs. And progressively, vicariously, not intentionally, we build up a way of life whereby we eat and drink a certain type of food that gets us high, that gives us a buzz, to manage all of our emotional needs. And when you do anything in a dominant and excessive way, over time, that relationship, as fulfilling as it may be, will cause you harm. And what happens is when we indulge in that relationship excessively, the harm that this particular relationship causes us is our obesity and our diabetes and our sleep apnea and all of those things. And instead of listening to those subtle symptoms and adjusting our eating and drinking, we ignore those subtle negative things and we distort the reality of them and we pretend they don't exist. So we can keep doing that emotional side of eating. We eat that substance like a drug, like alcohol, like nicotine, like crack cocaine, we build a way of life around accessing the high that we get from that drug, distort the reality until that relationship gets out of control. And a fat person is someone who uses food as a particular drug, not all types of food, a particular type of food as a drug to get high, to manage their emotional needs, and then have learned to distort or negate the reality, the negative reality of that obesity. By that time, that relationship is out of control. When the relationship with a particular drug that you use for its emotional value causes you a great deal of harm and you continue to indulge in that relationship and ignore that harm, that's my definition of an addiction. Now, what I said is that food will never get you fat. So what is the substance? Well, it has to be something that we can supersede in terms of our physiologic need. And it's also got to be something that releases endorphins that makes us feel good. That substance is carbohydrates, sugars and starches. We eat sugars and starches not because of their nutritional value, but because of the buzz factor, because of the high that we get from them. And therefore our body doesn't physiologically regulate that intake because we supersede that, that intake beyond hunger because of the emotional satisfaction it gives us. And if we ignore the subtle hints that we gave you a couple of pounds here and there, and we continue to indulge in that relationship with the carbohydrates, we get fat. So, obesity is not the problem. Obesity is the consequence of the problem. The underlying problem is an out of control relationship with a drug called carbohydrates. Lindsay Lohan gets DUIs. That's not her problem. Her problem is a relationship with alcohol. Fat people's problem is not the obesity. 
it's the relationship with the carbohydrates, and we have lost control. Therefore, we have not a weight problem or an eating problem or a food problem. We have a substance abuse problem. And the management of obesity has to follow substance abuse principles if it's going to be effective rather than calorie restriction principles that will always fail.